So we just talked about the creation of objects, and I went over at bullets A, B, and C with you using super and subclasses. I skipped over this little part up top called the cosmic superclass. Okay, and we see some awful looking things here. Like what stands out to me, I think, if I was a first time programmer, would be that object parameter. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. And then a method called clone that returns an object. I, I honestly don't like that at all. And then here's something even crazier, hash code. I'm a little uncomfortable after seeing that table for the first time, at least. Well, first of all, you're already pretty good at two string. Second of all, you have used this same equals method throughout the year on dozens of coding bats, but you've only used it with strings. So you're aware of it. It shouldn't be a big shock to your system, except for the crazy parameter type, right? Object. But I think when you think about it, that'll be okay. A string is a kind of object. That's why it's object, okay? And so what we're just talking about putting a superclass on the left and a subclass on the right, I just said a string is an object, a has a relationship. So does that mean we can do object str equals new string Wow, it does. Do you see how the last part of the lecture has already hooked up with this part of the lecture? We had never seen code like that until four minutes ago when I went super, super one equals new sub, right? That's the same thing. Super, super one equals new sub. I forgot my capitals here. Yeah. But that's the same idea. So the cosmic superclass, what does that mean? Well, every class that does not extend in their class automatically, I'm reading that wrong. Every class that does not extend another class automatically extends the class object, automatically. That means every tester that you wrote in the first semester really did this. You watching my tester here? Here's what it really did. Extends object. You can compile that, it'll work because it's already true. It's true for all classes. Now, since sub extends something else, okay? It gets it from super, which does not already extend something, extends object. Implicitly, invisibly, or as the book calls it, cosmically. Crazy. But that's what's going on. So in that object class, if I said name two methods in the object class, well, you'd think about this table, hopefully. And realize you saw a two string here and equals here. If you could find your in your C drive the uh, object class, you could look inside it and see the two string method and the equals method. You could also look in that documentation called the API we saw in the uh, Magpy lab. You could look it up there as well and see two string and equals in there. You'd also see clone. You'd also see hash code. But thankfully, those two are not on the AP exam. I don't think you'll ever see Mr. Reisky use clone or hash code because they're not on the AP exam. Just like yesterday's little tiny topic of final methods and final classes, not on the AP exam. Okay. I, I just wanted to introduce that to you. We need to spend like a whole day practicing this equals method, okay? 
whenever you write a two-string method, you're already doing it. You're already overriding, okay? You're already overriding not just the two-string in the superclass, but also you're overriding the two-string in the object class, and you didn't even know it. Okay. The string class overrides the equals method in the object class, and we're going to start writing classes like that. Like when we write zombie or werewolf next time, the directions won't just say include a two-string method. They'll say also override the equals method in the object class. Okay. Just wanted to touch on that today. It's there. You're going to see it as you review. The creation of object stuff is all good stuff. This table is all good on top, but we're not going to do clone or hash code. 